guys it's so good to have you in this session of our lessons and we shall be considering foreign policy you would understand that at the end of this lesson and you should be able to identify the major objectives of the Nigerian foreign policy again you should also analyze Nigeria's aligned posture what is alignment or non-alignment you will get to know all this in this lesson just be with us so we would start with the definition of foreign policy what is foreign policy so it refers to the decisions and the actions which are taken by a state to pursue her interests within the global system you remember when i say state in this regard it doesn't mean our local state i mean nigeria as a country and so foreign policy as regards any country is the decision taken by that state to pursue her interests within the global system and nigeria's foreign policy is the totality of nigeria's interaction within the international system do not forget that her decisions her interactions with the international world and in defining and planning their foreign policies that's nigeria governments must especially consider the enhancement of national interests that's the basic thing and so if a country is not promoting the national interests of her country at the international level then those foreign policies will not hold water so what's the purpose why do we have foreign policies why should we even engender any first is for friendship and cooperation and so countries have foreign policies at that international level to enhance friendship and cooperation among sister states and again non-alignment so it helps nigeria especially not to be aligned to either the east or the west each of these parts represent a thing either communism or capitalism and so it helps them to be non-aligned again clear and political and practical policies and so it helps them to make policies that would benefit their country their own state at that international level nigerian foreign policy also helped in the independence of african states and so when nigeria gained independence it also helped other states to gain their freedom and it also has respect for territorial integrity and so it respects the sovereignty of other states and also it helps in the peaceful resolution of crisis so they help manage situations and crisis so it does not take another level where it would result to war that's some of the um, the purposes again it also helped in the eradication of colonialism in africa and of course the apartheid in south africa and they also use diplomacy or talking or meetings they make a lot of agreements to solve international problems they help to keep the peace to keep the tide at the national and international levels they also try to keep problems at a very minimal level so it doesn't develop into conflict that would necessitate a military settlement that's like some of the purposes of our foreign policies now what are the factors that determines or that bring about foreign policies why do we have to make foreign policies what are the determining factors one is the human resource and size and so you know that you cannot do anything if you do not have sufficient and adequate resources to carry on the project and so the human resources and the size of a country would also enhance the foreign policies to be made economic resources are another factor so previous commitments of the government also help so imagine that nigeria had signed had signed some treaties or some pacts with other nations it will be hard to um to renege on those agreements and so previous commitments of nigeria with other countries would also help them to make policies that would favor them or that would keep the relationship they have with other nations the military strength of nigeria is another thing and so their ability to mobilize the military the strength of the military would also help them achieve some of the um, things that they project in the foreign policies industrial strength technological strength enough weaponry and all of that they also contribute to the foreign policies made the public opinion 
And so when they make a national um, policy that we are not comfortable with, the people would agitate. Besides, it's a government that allows for public opinion. And so where public opinion does not allow a particular um, position of the government to stand, they definitely would not initiate it as a foreign policy. Geographical location, and you know that Nigeria is in the heart of Africa. And so all of its national policies must favor Africa. Nigeria is the heartbeat of Africa, and of course their policies must favor Africa. National interest, domestic interest, globalization, historical background, all of these things contribute to the foreign policies. That's what things that make the kind of policies that we have in Nigeria. Now we're going to consider the relations, the various relations we've had at various times with developed and developing countries. And so you know that we've moved from one civilian to military regimes and all of that, a lot of administrations and all of these administrations have their foreign policies or the impacts that they made at the international level. And so we shall be considering some of these. One is the Balewa era, the Tafawa Balewa era, which ranged between 1960 to 1966. And so the, the Balewa era tried to consolidate by joining international organizations. There were so many international forums that they introduced Nigeria to. And so it was involved in the decolonization process. They led the struggle against colonialism and apartheid in South Africa. The government also broke diplomatic relations with France. Why? Because they tried to test an atomic bomb in the Sahara Desert, which would have, would have caused a lot of loss of lives. So they broke diplomatic relations with France on that ground. And in this same administration, Ian Smith's unilateral declaration of independence in Rhodesia at 1965, it was opposed by this administration. They never encouraged that UNDH. And again, it supported the expulsion of South Africa from the Commonwealth in 1961. And of course, they played crucial roles in the formation of the Organization of African Union in 1963. Let's look at the Gowon era. These times ranged from the 1966 to 1975. The foreign policies at that time shifted emphasis from the West to the East. And so most of the weapons which was used in prosecuting the civil war came from the east at the time. And the administration accepted the principle of non-interference in the sovereignty of African states. You know that all of the African states at the time were colonized. And so this administration pushed for the non-interference of the sovereignty of all of these African states and respect for the principles governing the OAU and the UNO and those were organizations basically for the African states. And also this administration played a crucial role in the establishment of ECOWAS, the Economic West African State. And also it granted financial assistance to the, uh, the African states who were in need, who needed funds to develop their countries. And when Liberia had issues, they supported them and helped them come out of their crisis as well as Syria alone. So many other efforts they made in the African states. And so we would also look at the Mortala Mohammed and the Obasanjo era, which ranged between 1975 to 1979. Now this administration favored decolonization as well as all other administrations. And also they helped in the self-determination of African states. If you look at the events in Angola at the time, that's a case in point. And of course, the regime supported Augustin Neto's popular movement, which was called the MPLA, for the liberation of Angola against um, the UNITA. Of course, some countries were not in support of this movement, but the administration of Moritala Mohammed and Obasanjo agreed to this uh, movement and supported it gravely. They also gave weight to the struggle against apartheid policy in South Africa by sponsoring the World Conference for Action Against Apartheid that was in Lagos. And so let's look at the Shagari era, the 1979 to 1983 regime. Now this Shagari era, it was the second republic civilian administration in Nigeria and the administration supported Zimbabwe's independence. So you see, each of the administrations have a positive effect in 
some of the African states that we have. And so this one supported the Zimbabwe's independence. And of course, their uh, action represented Nigeria's avowed stand on the issue of decolonization. We have never stood for colonialism, and so this administration represented that too. And the foreign policy of this administration, it was not smooth sailing because we had efforts which were made to please the colonial masters, and that was not encouraging at all. Now we shall look at the Buhari Idiamon era of 1983 to 1985. Now this regime expelled West Africans who were living illegally in the country. Yeah, that was a good thing. And the land borders were closed to check smuggling, the inflow of illegal immigrants as well as currency trafficking. And so these measures were aimed at consolidating domestic national interest in the nation's foreign policy objectives. And we shall quickly look at the Babangidas era of 1985 to 1993. His administration tried to bring Nigeria back into the foreign front of African international relations. And because the last administration had put us in a place of troubles and spites by other nations. And a good number of trade and economic missions were undertaken. Countries like Germany, China, Brazil and all of that for example, visited Nigeria to discuss possible areas of cooperation. So this era allowed people, allowed other countries to transact with Nigeria, especially in the areas of their economy and improvement. Again, the administration passed a decree and encouraged African states to do the same against the dumping of toxic and radioactive wastes on the continent. And so they disallowed and did not encourage the dumping of toxic wastes on the continent and of course this administration led to the formation of the ECOMOG we shall discuss that later and it was committed to restoring the peace and the normalcy in Liberia of course in 1990 the administration also established the Center for Democratic Studies that encouraged and introduced democracy and of course this government also introduced the structural adjustment program now let's see the Shonekon Abacha era now, this administration helped to usher in the peace in Liberia. Liberia was rigged with so much crisis at the time. And this regime adopted a confrontational posture with the international community. They were not aligned with the West or the East. They were very confrontational. And the administration was, of course, accused of abuse of human rights. And subsequently, sanctions were clamped down on this administration on the country from the West and the member nations of the Commonwealth. So Nigeria at this time was alienated and her leadership position in Africa was also alienated. So let's look at the Abubakar era. Now the Abubakar administration embarked on reconciliation after what the aftermath of the previous administration. This administration set out to reconcile Nigeria with her sister states, with her friends and the world community to correct the poor image that the country was plunged into during the regime of the late General Sani Abacha. And of course, his administration succeeded in returning Nigeria to its rightful place where evolving and of course, action plans were taken that would see Nigeria through in the years to come. And that's about that for all of the eras at that time. And I had mentioned the concept which is the non-alignment or alignment. And we shall discuss that now. What is non-alignment? It is the non-commitment of a nation to either the West or the East on an international issue. And so it seemed like you were only going to make contributions if you were on the side of the Westerners or the Easterners, which represented capitalism and communism respectively. But then the doctrine of non-alignment, which Nigeria adopted very quickly and readily, is that which does not take any position based on a side. It is neutral, it just takes its decisions and not minding what the Westerners or the Easterners would view about their position. And so it is a foreign policy that allows nations, especially third world countries, to discuss issues and assess international problems objectively, not subject to any parts, not considering whether the East or the West has anything to offer. And so why would Nigeria adopt this principle of non-alignment? 
One is to interact and cooperate freely. They do not want interferences. So they can take the decisions um, with an objective mind, not subject to any interference. And again, to pursue its economic and political policies without any form of dictation. And you know that Nigeria is the mouthpiece of Africa, and so if it begins to align with a part, it may not be convenient for another sister state in Africa. And of course, it respected the sovereignty of the African states and allowed the leaders a free hand. And so this is where we draw the curtain on our topic today, foreign policy. I'm sure you've learned a lot. Do look out for our subsequent videos where we shall deal with other issues relating to our government. Do have a new time.